Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Lane and welcome to my review channel. So for today's movie, I will be reviewing The Crow 2024, directed by Rupert Sanders and starring Bill Skarsgård, FKA Twigs, and Danny Huston. So the story follows Eric, played by Bill Skarsgård, as he engages in a romance with, uh, with Shelley, played by FKA Twigs, in a sort of a prison rehab center. Finding their conditions to be ultra dreary and ultra depressing, they decide to uh, make a break for it and they engage in a romance with each other. And this is all going good uh, until they are both viciously murdered by a, pair, by a group of criminal thugs led by a demon crime lord by the name of Vincent Rogue, played by Danny Huston. And finding himself too angry to die, Eric, he is reborn as the Crow and uh, guided by a spirit by the name of Kronos to engage in vengeance to bring Shelley back to life and to, quote, make the wrong things right. So first, let's talk about the good news for the movie. The good news is... Like, this film is an actual proper remake. This isn't like, you know, other remakes where they just, like, rehash the movie once again, just beat by beat and dialogue by dialogue. Lion <coughs> like 2019. Mm. Anyway, yeah, this film actually has some new ideas to explore. It fleshes out the romance between Eric and Shelley. It uh, features a demon lord uh, enemy, like... This time around, Eric's he's not the only supernatural element of the story. There's a spirit guide to help named Kronos who helps guide Eric in achieving his vengeance. And the film tries to explore the idea of the characters and their demons. The bad news is the film doesn't do a very good job of any of this. Uh, the exploration of the romance lacks substantial chemistry and causes the pacing to drag hard like in the original film like the film starts out you know with well again spoilers here but again the film's 30 years old now the film the original film starts out with eric just getting already being murdered like the film starts in media res with with eric dead lying on the ground from falling five stories up and his girlfriend on the cusp of death and this one like I'd say it has to be at least a solid half hour before, like, the plot proper actually gets rolling. And it's not that interesting to begin with. Again, I wouldn't mind the romance between Eric and Shelley, but it's not that interesting. Like, it's lukewarm at best. It's not the worst romance I've ever seen on screen, but it's not particularly interesting either. Uh, the, also, the main villain, Vincent, yeah, he is, like, for being an immortal criminal dr lord, he is super boring. Well, maybe not, just, I don't know, just dull. Like, he doesn't really do much interesting. Like, the most interesting thing about him is how he convinces people to do bad things by whispering some sort of demon chant in their ears. Like, that's it. Like, th there's not much interesting to this character. And the film's explorations of characters' inner demons is half-baked at best. There are a few moments where you go, oh, okay, all right, you might actually be onto something here, but the film never really follows through on it properly. And also the writing, like, the again, the original features super eccentric, over-the-top characters, and this one, the characters are just dull, like, personality devoid husks that, and the acting doesn't really help matters much either, which I will get to in a minute. So, the, like I said earlier, the performances are lukewarm at best. Uh, Bill Skarsgård, in an uncharacteristically poor performance, he fails to bring the necessary charisma or theatricality to the role that this kind of role demands in order to bring the character of Eric to life, ironically enough. Uh, he does no favor to the character with his un surprisingly flat delivery. Like, there are certain moments where I was like, um, okay, you needed to be, like, super serious, and you acted like you were at a frustrated dude at the DMV, like, a little bit more passion here, will ya? It's, and then there's Danny Huston, again, he's playing a demon crime lord, like, how, an immortal one at that, how are you this boring? Like, Danny Huston's low energy delivery does not help anything at all all it's i get what he was trying to go for more subdued but there's barely any personality to the character also fka twigs she's eh, fine as shelly but she's not that particularly interesting either like 
this film was clearly trying to flesh out her character more, make her, you know, try to avoid fridging her a la the original, but they didn't flesh her out, character out that much. I was kind of just sitting there waiting. It's like, okay, when's the crow going to, like, die and then get that cool-ass, you know, face paint stuff. It's like, that's kind of what the romance just left me wanting. And even then, it, when it finally does get to that, it's not that interesting. The one kind of saving grace for this movie are the action scenes. And even then, it's not that huge of a saving grace. There are a few decent moments of pitch black humor to be had during the action, but not enough to keep the film from being an overly serious slog. And the action scenes, they're fine enough. They're decently choreographed enough. They're decently shot enough, but they're not nearly as fun or exciting as the original. I mean, okay, maybe for a film like this, fun isn't the proper goal, but at least engaging, and this film wasn't that engaging. It's not until like the very end of the movie, there's a shootout in an opera building, and it is awesome. Like the film finally embraces its campy roots and just goes all out with the pitch black humor and the gore and the choreography. Like during this sequence, the film is firing on all cylinders. And if the film was like this in its entirety, I'd be having a very different conversation about this movie right now. So though it's not without creative vision, uh, the remake of The Crow lacks the high watch performances and energy of the original film. So with all that in mind, I will be giving The Crow 2024 two and a half out of five stars. Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. If you like this review and would like to see more like it, be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below. And for today's comment section prompt of the day, what is your favorite version of The Crow and why?